YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Antha Barber coming back at you with another haircut tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be doing a crew cut with a low fade. I like to begin each cut by brushing or combing out my client's hair. Shout out to Still Too Comb for this dope comb you see me using. And I'm actually going to give this comb set away during this video. As soon as it hits 10k, that's 10,000 views, I'm going to go ahead and run a random comment selector and I'm going to choose one of you guys to give this set a still two combs to. So now that I got everything combed out, I'm going to take my wall number four premium guard with the lever closed and I'm going to begin to set and create somewhat of a guideline. You're gonna notice that I'm going right around the parietal ridge from the front, the back, um, and to the, both the sides. And the reason why I'm knocking it down to that number four is because when I'm done with this blend, I know exactly what I'm gonna blend into. And I'm trying to retain some of the weight around his parietal ridge, and this is gonna help me do that. So now I'm going to jump right into his blend. So I'm going to come in with my caliber 357 using my wall half color guard and I'm coming in with the lever open. However, once I create this guide, I'm then going to close my lever and begin to blend from the bottom right back up towards the top where I just left off with the lever fully open. And the reason why I'm choosing it to do it this way is if I come in with the lever open, I'm already setting myself up for that transition into that number one. So knowing that I originally wanted to set it with the half guard closed, I decided to come in with the half guard fully open, create that guideline, and then close that lever and begin to blend from the bottom of that guide right back up towards the top of that guide. Again, because that's gonna help me transition into my one guard, which is my next step. Now that I created that guide and blended it out, I'm now going to come in with my wall number one color guard with the lever fully open and I'm going to begin to set and create my next guideline. I am going to give myself the same amount of space that I gave myself with the previous guide. That way I keep everything consistent with this blend. And once I set everything in with the lever fully open, you'll see that I then close my lever and I'll begin to blend from the bottom of that guide right back up towards the top of that guide where I just left off with the lever fully open. Now that that guide's blended out, I'm now going to come in with my wall one and a half premium guard with the lever fully open. And just like I just demonstrated to you in the screen right there, I'm somewhat using that flick out motion because I'm trying to see if this one and a half fully open could transition into that number four that I originally set that perimeter with. However, it's not. So I'm going to go ahead and stop flicking out. But once I come in, just like the previous guide, I'm going to give myself the same amount of space so I keep everything consistent. 
And once I come in and clean everything up with the lever fully open, you'll then see that I again close my lever and I'll begin to blend from the bottom of that guide right back up towards the top of that guide where I just left off with the lever fully open. So now I'm going to come in with my wall number two premium guard with the lever fully open and this time that two fully open will transition into that four pretty well. However, there might be a little bit of weight left behind and I'll show you how to remove that later on in the cut with some clip rover comb. But for now, I'm just making sure that I remove any bulk or dark spots that I see. So once I clean everything up with the lever fully open, again, you'll see me close my lever and begin to blend from the bottom of that right back up towards the top of that where I just left off with the lever fully open. So something right here that I think is really worth noting is my client is actually, the way his hair grows right above um, the sideburn area, so somewhat off into the taper area, his hair grows back really slow and it's naturally very light in that area. So anytime we skin him out or take it too short, his grow back doesn't look right. It just doesn't look right. And so something that's really important to me, and I feel like it should be important to all of us, is allowing your client to not only look and feel their best when they leave your chair, but also for the two, three weeks until they come back and see you again. And so we went ahead and came up with this because we seen that it best suits my client and his needs. And so that's just something really important that I think we should all take the time to look at is not just allowing that client to leave feeling their best when they leave the chair, but every day in the morning when they wake up and, and they do their hair in the mirror and they get ready for their day, they still feel at their best. So right here, I'm prepping his hair for some sheer work. You saw that I applied some water. For me personally, applying water just allows me to have a little more control over my client's hair. And so I prefer to do my sheer work wet. I know there are a lot of people that prefer to do it dry. And if that's your thing, then go for it. Like I said, applying water to the hair just allows me to have a little bit more control. So right here, I'm gonna do just a basic trim. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna pull up the front section of his hair and I'm gonna make my first initial cut to the desired length. Once I make that cut, I'm then gonna pull up a new section towards the left side of his hair, including a little bit of that section that I just cut so I can use it as a guide and a reference point. And I'm gonna continue to do that all the way to the left side of his head. Once I do that, I'm gonna mimic the same exact steps, re-pulling up that section in the middle that I cut, pulling up a new section towards the right side, including a little bit of that section that I just cut, again, to use it as a guide and a reference point. And I'm gonna do that from the front all the way to the back side of his head. Alright, so as we make it through me trimming out the rest of his hair, I just want to take this time to say shout out to my boy Tito Beats for this fire you hear in your ear. I'm going to drop a link in the description, so make sure you go check out his YouTube channel, subscribe, and let him know that your boy Anthe Barber sent you. I also really quickly wanted to run the rules down on this giveaway. They're really simple, so just pay attention real quick. The first rule is you have to be subscribed to my YouTube channel. The second rule is you have to follow myself and Still Tooth Combs on Instagram. So you have to follow me at anthabarber509 and you have to follow Still Tooth Combs. And again, that's on Instagram. Once you know you've done that for sure, get active in that comment section below 
and in your comment you have to include the word still tooth comb. I am going to run a random comment selector, I'll probably go live when I do it as soon as this video hits 10k. So once the video hits 10k, I'm going to go live with a random comment selector and that comment has to include the word still tooth comb. So now that I'm done with my shear work, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of clipper over comb to knock down that bulk and allow that blend to transition off into that length on top. So I demonstrated to you what I'm looking to remove in the beginning when I set the comb on his head and the direction that I sat the comb in, that's how I'm looking to remove it. And the reason why I chose to, to set the comb in that direction is because I'm trying to retain somewhat of a box shape to my client's head and not give them that rounded off look so right here i'm just making sure that i knock down any bulk that i see again to allow that transition from that blend into that length on top to go smoothly So right here I'm going to kind of just finalize everything with a little bit of detailing using some shear over comb. I am using thinning shears and I know I don't cut the fanciest with these and I know I'm supposed to only move one side of the blade and blah 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 but this is how I get my work done. This is how I move comfortably every day cutting everyday clients and you can see right here that it's doing exactly what I need it to do. So don't get lost in the sauce. And uh, just make sure that you know how to deliver before you try to make somebody shiver. You feel me? And here it is, y'all. Look at the final cut. If you got anything useful off this, I ask that you smash that like button. If you're new to my channel, I suggest you stick around. It's only going to get doper from here. I apologize about being away, but what I can say is a lot of great things are taking place and I'm back y'all. So make sure you turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss these jewels that I'm dropping. I appreciate y'all. Be blessed and be a blessing. I'm out.